Welcome to the next in our series of video tutorials on how to use um, the special QGIS build that we've created for GBIF for bi Biodiversity Informatics um, workshopping. In this tutorial I will show you how to run a basic model and how to um, add some data to QGIS and fetch some data from GBIF. When you are provided with the DVD you can install the, insert this DVD into your computer and if you browse the DVD you'll see that there's a data directory and inside the data directory is two direct subdirectories, raster and vector. I'm going to go into the raster data and there again you'll find a subdirectory called latlong. I'm going to take this whole subdirectory, copy it and place it into my home directory. I will make a new subfolder called GIS data and place this folder inside of that. It may take a moment to copy over from the CD as it's 105 megabytes or so of data to copy. When the data is copied over, you can return to QGIS and add some of that data to your project. Use the Add Raster Layer icon on the toolbar to do this. Now, using the file dialog that appears, browse to the directory where you copied and pasted the data. On my system, it was in my documents, GIS data, lat long, and then I'm going to be choosing some World Clim climate data. So I'm going to go into World Clim, present. And now I can choose which layers I would like to add to my project. I'm going to be adding precipitation, maximum temperature, and I'll come back in a second and add minimum temperature. So I'll just do that again. And you can add as many times as you like additional layers just by choosing them in the file dialog. So I now have three layers loaded in QGIS, one for minimum temperature, one for maximum temperature, and one for precipitation. I'll use these layers as a basis for running my first climatic space model. My apologies, my first niche model. Before I can run a niche model, I need to have some occurrence data. In order to find occurrence data, I will use the GBIF searcher tool to download some data from the GBIF portal. You can start, start this search tool by clicking on this icon in the toolbar. When you open the tool, you need to agree to the license that GBIF um, places their data under. You can then choose a species name or a species group of species names to search for in uh, the GBIF search portal. So I'm going to add in Anopheles Cambier and then you, as you type each one you just click on this plus icon and it will add it to the search list. You also need to specify where the output data should be placed onto your hard drive. I'll do that by clicking on this icon on the right. I'm going to put the data also in my Documents and Settings folder, My Documents, GIS Data, and I'm going to make a new folder under that called Species. OK, when I've done that, I can click Next and the search will commence.
When the search is complete, you will be provided with a small report which shows you how many localities were obtained as a result of the search. In this case you can see I obtained 983 records. You can click Finish to complete the search process. When you return to your main QGIS view, you'll see the species data that was retrieved from the search has been placed into your project. At this point, it's probably a good idea to save your QGIS project so that you can return to it later. I'm going to place my project inside of my GIS data directory and create a new folder called QGIS Projects. Inside of that directory, I'll give my project a name. You can see the project name at the top of the window. Right, so now I have some species data, occurrence data, and I have some independent variable data for my climatic variables. I can now use these to run my first model. To run a first model, you can use the experiment builder wizard, which is on the toolbar over here. When the wizard launches, you simply fill in the boxes provided in order to provide the necessary information to Open Modeler so that it knows how and what, where to place, how to run the model and where to place the outputs on your file system. First of all, you should give your experiment a name. You can optionally change the description, although a default one is provided for you. By default, OpenModeler will place the model outputs into this directory. You can change it if you want to. Next, you have the option of choosing whether you want to run the model using a layer already loaded into QGIS for the occurrence data, or whether you would like to fetch occurrences from a file on your file system. In this example, we'll be using a layer that's already been loaded in QGIS, namely the Anopheles Gambii data that we fetched using our GBIF search. So I select Anopheles Gambii. Now I need to t tell the Open Modeler which field in the re uh, result set contains the species name. Because we're using a shapefile which has been loaded in QGIS, I do not need to specify the X and Y fields. If I was using an open model occurrences file, I could specify them in this point. Or if I was using a non-spatial table, um, I could specify them here as well. I'll click next to go to the next step. You'll see that in the result sets that I received from the GBIF search, the name was actually resolved to Anopheles Gambier and Anopheles Gambier S. I'll just be using Anopheles Gambia as the basis for my model. If you want to, you can use more than one species at this point, or more than one taxonomic name. Now I need to tell Open, model, open Modeler which algorithm to use to conduct this uh, distribution model. I'm going to run a simple BioClim model in this case. You can modify these algorithm profiles using the Algorithm Profile Manager, which is an advanced activity. But by default, we suggest that you use the modeling profiles as provided by the algorithm writers. OK, so we're going to use BioClim. Now we need to tell Open Modeler which layers to use for the independent data, which will be used to derive the climate space, uh, the ecological niche model. You can see that I have once again the option of using layers that are already loaded into QGIS or using layers defined in a layer set. Using layer sets is a more advanced way of building models and it allows you to repeatedly use the same data layers without having to load them into QGIS each time. For this example though, we will simply use some layers that are already loaded into QGIS. I'll select all three layers and click Next. Because we are la using layers in QGIS rather than a layer set, we do not have the option of projecting into future or different climate scenarios. So the algorithm will produce a model and that model will be projected back into the same layers that we used to create the model. So at this point we can simply click on finish. 
When you click finish, the model will run. And once it's completed, it will be added to the QGIS project in the background. You can click on OK to return to the main project view. I'm going to drag my layer one level down so that I can see the original points above it. You can see the model output shows in green areas of low probability, shows in, oh sorry, my apologies, shows in green areas of medium probability, shows in red areas of high probability, and shows in blue areas of low probability. Bear in mind that BioClim is a very coarse and simplistic way of producing a model. With the model that I've created, I can now use all the standard GIS tools inside of QGIS to visualize and um, explore the climate uh, niche, the ecological niche model that was created. So for example, I can zoom into a particular area. And I can start to see whether the model predicted present for all occurrence points. In this case, you can see it did not, because these obviously fell outside of the 95 percentile range. I can also combine the output of the model, or the niche model, with other layers. In this case I'll add a terrain model and use that as an underlay for the, ecologic, uh, for the ecological niche model. A terrain model has been provided in the sample data that we've placed onto the CD. You can find it by looking in the heel shade directory. I'm going to add the color shade clipped layer, which is a color shaded relief model for Tanzania, which has been clipped to the national boundaries of Tanzania. You can see initially it's loaded above our other layers, so I'm going to drag it down so that it lands up beneath our species distribution model. And then I'm going to make the species distribution model layer slightly transparent so that I can see the prediction of presence or absence in context of the relief. To do that I will double click on the Anopheles Gambia layer, go to the transparency tab and slide that global transparency level up to around 50 or 60 percent. Now the model is shown overlaid onto the terrain. You can see the red areas before are now slightly uh, mauve or purple looking, but you can still see now that um, the terrain is visible through the model and you can see the prediction of absence or presence in context of terrain. That concludes the second tutorial which shows you how to run a basic model using OpenModeler within QGIS.